Okay, class, I thought we would do a really quick screencast to show you the basics of digital photo editing. Last week, I had one of you take a picture of me in front of a green screen, so that's what you see here on the desktop. As always, I recommend that you make a new folder, so I'm going to right-click on the desktop, choose New Folder, and I'm going to call this Magazine Cover. And just so I have everything in one place, I'm going to drag the picture that we took earlier. And then this is a picture of uh, Eastern's old main building. So I'm going to use that for my background. So I have both of those pictures inside of this folder now. We are going to be using Windows and we'll be using a free program called Paint.net. So go down to the Start button, choose the Paint.net program, and here it is. This is a basic photo editor. We have different floating toolbars around. So here's the tools palette. Here's layers. And over here is the color wheel. So under layers, you'll notice that we've got a background and it's checked. So I'm going to open up the green screen picture of myself. So let's go file, open. Where did I save it? On the desktop in a folder called magazine covers. And here it is and I will just double click to open up this page. So here's an example of me in front of the green screen. Now the first thing I will use in the tools menu, we've got the selection tool, uh, we've got various move tools here. If you do a mouse over it tells you what each one of these is, so there's your zoom tool. Uh, mag magic wand, the gradient tool, the paint bucket tool, the paintbrush, the eraser, pencil, cloning tool, text tool, and so on. Uh, I'm going to select the magic wand tool. So the reason I took my picture in front of the green screen was I wanted to be able to uh, get rid of the green very easily. So I'm going to click once and you'll notice that it also picked up some of uh, everything besides uh, or colors in addition to green. So I'm going to undo and if you remember the keyboard shortcut, control Z, that's your friend, uh, let's undo. I'm going to change something called tolerance here. So I'm going to cut that about in half. The tolerance is the amount of green or the amount of color that it will pick up when I use the magic wand tool. So let me click now and now you can see a little bit more defined. You can see the uh, white outline around my head and shirt and shoulders here. So now then with this uh, highlighted you'll notice there's some green up here that it did not quite pick up but we'll take care of that in a minute. Once this is highlighted if you press the delete key on the keyboard you essentially have a transparent effect. You, you uh, have essentially made a cutout. So you can actually see through, and that's what the checkerboard pattern. Now we've got some additional green over here on the left, so I'm going to once again use my magic wand tool, a tolerance set about 25, and hit the delete key. Same thing over in the right-hand corner. And as you can see, I've got some cleanup work. There's some green shades of green that it didn't quite pick, but that's not a big deal. I can choose my eraser tool. And since I've got quite a bit to clean up here, I'm going to change my brush width to something a little bit larger. Let's choose a brush width of 60. And then I'm just going to start erasing. So you can see over here on the left side as I work that I'm getting rid of that green, just cleaning up some of those extra green dots that the Magic Wand tool didn't quite get. You'll also notice up in the upper right and the upper left, the black area, that's the border of the green screen. So we don't need that in our picture. I'm gonna get rid of that. And I've got some more around here. Now, when you get into the real detail of this, uh, you can spend a lot of time here getting everything just perfect. But this is going to be a real quick edit, so I might miss a few things. But over here, you notice on my shoulder that there's still just a little bit there. I want to be careful and not click and cut off part of my arm, as you can see there. What's the undo? Control Z. Not a big deal because that will undo whatever uh, action you did last. Now I'm going to zoom in, so I've got a plus and minus screen up here, so let's click the plus to zoom in here a little bit, and then I'm going to use my elevator bars, and now then I can see a lot clearer uh, over here on the right side. Let's go down. So you can see some of this. Now my brush is a little bit large, so let's shrink that down a little bit, so it's not quite as large. Let's go to about, oh, let's say 20. And then I've got a little bit more control, so you can really get down here and get into the fine details. Uh, for purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to call this good. Now, if this were my project, I would spend more time and get this uh, as close to perfect as I could. Now, let's zoom back out here. So now then, I essentially have one layer on the background layer right here. Now then, I'm going to click over in the Layers palette, the plus symbol, 
and that will add a new layer. So you can see layer two, which is on top, uh, in this case, a cutout of myself. Now we need to open up another picture. So I'm going to go over to my file menu, choose open, and there's the EIU old main picture I was telling you about. Double click to open that, and you can look that we have now have two pictures open up in the upper right hand corner. And there's a picture of the cutout, and here's a picture of old main. So what I would like to do is select this entire picture of old main. Now just to let you know, if you choose image and resize, that shows you the width and height. And we've got inches here, width about 10 inches, and height about seven and a half. Uh, different cameras take different resolution of pictures in general. The higher the number of pixels, the more detailed, the larger the picture is going to be. So I just wanted to let you know that's where you do that underneath edit, or image and resize. And I'm going to select everything. So I'm sitting here on my layers palette. I am on the background. So I'm going to press control A to select everything. And if you remember the keyboard shortcut, control C, that copies my background. Now I'm going to switch back to my cutout picture of myself. And layer two is now sitting on top of the background. So whenever I select layer two, it's highlighted in blue. I want to make sure I am on layer two. Then I'm going to paste that picture of old main in. So do control V. It's telling me that that picture is actually larger than what I'm working on here. I'm just going to say keep my canvas size for now. And here it is. And as you can see, it is a lot larger than the picture behind it. So I'm going to grab the upper left hand corner in this case, move this around a little bit and try to get this to where it will fit. Now I'm going to grab the middle tab here of this picture. I'm going to stretch it out so I'm going to lose some uh, aspect ratio here. But that doesn't look too bad. It's about the same size as my canvas. The problem is layer two is on top of this background layer so I cannot see myself. I'm going to choose the background layer and use this up arrow which says move layer up one level and whenever I click that arrow I am now on top of the picture. But once again you can see there's some issues with the scale. I can also see some green up here. So since I am now on this background layer, again it's highlighted so that's how I know what layer I'm on. This checkbox, if you click it, it, the, it will make the layer disappear but I want to work on this background layer. I'm going to grab my eraser tool here again real quick and just very, whoops, let's go through. Now, do you see what happened there? I'm on layer two. I'm not on the picture where those green pixels are. So I started uh, to delete some of that background. So again, control Z is your friend. Let's get on the right layer and then choose the eraser tool. And let's go with a little bit bigger brush size here. And then now then I can come up here and get rid of some of those green dots as you see as I go around. Again, I need to take a little more time and be careful here, but uh, the only thing that's wrong now is I'm quite a bit out of proportion here. So I can grab the upper left hand corner again and shrink myself down to whatever size that I want. And through the magic of digital photo editing, you can stretch yourself long and tall or short and fat if you go this way. So get it to where it looks somewhat natural the best that you can. So we'll shrink it down here and we'll go right there. All right, and we're good. Now the last thing I want to show you is how to add text. So once again, anything, anytime you add something to a picture, I recommend that you create a new layer. So I will click on the Add New Layer button. I'm on Layer 3. I'll choose the uh, Text button. Now if you notice, this, bu this box is selected right now. So I want to make sure everything is unselected. So I'm going to go to my edit menu and say deselect. That box went away. So now I am solely on layer three. I'm going to choose text and let's use a little bit darker blue color since blue is an EIU color. And I'll choose text. I've got all kinds of different fonts that I can use. Uh, let's just go down through here and let's choose this one. And let's choose something a little bit larger. These are your fonts, your point sizes. So let's use 72 here click and say welcome to and then press enter EIU come back here and hit the space so I can move that around wherever I want once I have that I can grab my move tool and uh, select that move that around wherever I would like on the picture we're getting a bit long in the in the uh, screencast here so uh, you would go ahead and add your different uh, 
articles and things, uh, the different text layers and things that you wanted to do. You could layer this as much as you wanted. But let's say that we're done, and I'm wanting to save this. Now, I recommend you save it two ways. Let's do File, Save As, and by default, it saves it as a paint.net, which that means it will serve, it will uh, uh, allow you to make your changes to your layers. So let's go to the desktop again, into the magazine cover, and I'm going to call this uh, mag cover, and I'm going to say PDN, so I know that that's a paint.net file, and I will hit save. However, you will eventually post your magazine cover to the web, so we need to save it in a format that's compatible with the web, which, as you all know, is JPEG. So let's go down and choose the JPEG jo choice, and instead of saying PDN, let's say JPG, so that's just a cue for me that I know that that is my magazine cover, and I'll save that. And it gives me a choice to save my quality. I can make it less. And whenever you take away quality, it gets, uh, it, you know, you lose it. You lose quality, and it get, becomes a little blurred. But let's go there, and let's take it back up to about 95, the default, and say OK. It's going to give me a warning that says, this is going to flatten your image. In essence, it's going to take these three layers, make them into one JPEG layer, which is what I want for the web. So I'm going to say flatten, and now I'm done. If I close this out, go back to my desktop, I've got four files, my original two, my paint.net file, and my magazine cover. So if I double click my magazine cover, voila, there it is. So that's a quick lesson, a nice little screencast here to get you started with the free digital photo editing program called paint.net uh, running on a Windows 7 computer. Thank you. Until next time, this is Tom Grissom. Keep on learning.